Hi, I'm Laura Coyle, and I just got off a Zoom call with members in my learning community, and there were a couple of tips that I went over that I thought might make a good YouTube video, so I hope you enjoy this. So we're working on using textures in Illustrator in a course that I just released, which is part of the membership, and um, here are just a bunch of pattern fills that contain vector art that is also enhanced by using a texture that's made from bitmap tips and an opacity mask. But what I want to talk about today is taking uh, some of these colorways and, and getting them uh, so that you can upload them to Spoonflower, sort of as a single unit of the pattern. So um, let's take this one right here, this pink one. So you can see right here, I have all of this artwork. These are expanded. You can see the vectors there. And then over here, you know, all of these things on the left are pattern fill swatches. Um, so what I want to do first of all is get this art out um, from my uh, swatches panel and I can see it's highlighted right here. Now if you ever uh, select something like this and you have, you do this thing that I like to do which is basically build a, you know, this rectangle with the pattern fill on top and then the solid color behind it you know, as a separate fill, um, you may, when you select this, you may not see it in the swatches panel because right now we can see the pink is highlighted but the pattern itself is not and I can't locate it. So what you do is come over here, click on that exclamation point or you can click on the fill right here and that makes that fill active and now I can see it here in the swatches panel. The reason I want to do this is because I've got to drag this art here from the swatches panel just right out here so that I have expanded art that I'm going to use to export to Spoonflower. So I'm taking this right here and very important is this little no fill, no stroke bounding shape. This defines the pattern unit. And when I worked on this pattern inside of pattern editing mode, I did this as a half drop repeat. You can kind of see how that works there. And once it gets over into the swatches panel here, it's been translated from a half drop repeat into a grid repeat or a full repeat like this. Um, so this rectangle is really important, but I need to use it now to create that background color. So first thing I'm going to do is ungroup this command or control shift G. Then I'll zoom in and see if I can select that thing. Let's go into outline mode. That way it will be easier for me to find. There it is. All right. So I'm going to go and give it the background color, which I think is this color right here. Yeah. And then next I'm going to select it again. Now it's a pink rectangle and copy command or control C paste in front command or control F. Now it's really important when you're doing these steps that you don't move anything because this is defining the repeat and you want to keep it absolutely perfect. But I made a copy of that background shape because I want to use it to create an artboard. So there it is. I've got the copy selected. I'm going to go up to object and down to artboards and convert to artboards. So now that rectangle, the copy, is an artboard and then it's got you know the solid color rectangle sitting right there on top of it and um, what I'm going to do is just make this rectangle shape just a little bit bigger so it overlaps the edges so now we have artwork you know the motifs as well as the solid background shape overlapping the edges of the artboard and the reason I'm doing this, and a friend taught me this, it really does sort of eliminate some of those pattern tiling lines that you can sometimes get. Now there's a pattern tiling line in pattern fill swatches. That's a separate issue. This issue right here is from the size of the artboard and exporting and a lot of things about Illustrator and pixels that is just way too long of a story to go into right now. But if you have this overlap here, that can help. All right, so now I've got a single unit of this pattern and I'm gonna go ahead and export it. So I'll go up to file and then down to export and save for web. Okay, great, here's my pattern. Now it's only 810 pixels and that's because in Illustrator, uh, the base resolution is 72 PPI. Again, kind of a long story, but if I take 810 and divide it by 72, uh, I get 11.25. Now that is the size of this design. I created this in inches, 11 and a quarter inches. 
I'm going to upload this to spoon flour and I want it to stay 11 and a quarter inches um, at 150 pixels per inch. So that's the, you know, that's the size or, or the resolution that spoon flour is asking for. So if I take 11 and a quarter, 11.25 and multiply it by 150, what do I get? 1687.5. Okay, so that is you know, half a pixel, and that's what can create those little extra white lines sometimes. So what I wanna do is say, close enough, I want it to be, instead of 1687.5, I need it to be 1688. I'm gonna do the rounding up rather than let Illustrator do it. One, six, eight, eight. Um, so I'm doing that here in Safe for Web instead of doing it on the artboard, which is gonna um, be better for this. So, so I've got a width of 1688. At 150 ppi, that's going to give me 11 and a quarter inches of width in this repeat unit. And it's a PNG high. That's looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. All right. And let me just call that pink and enter. And there we go. So that little white line that I talked about before, let's look at that in Photoshop. So because I did that little bit of extra... Um, let me show you, you know, this is what it looks like in Photoshop when I take that pattern and I put it into the repeat view in Photoshop, um, pattern preview, and I don't see any lines. But if I look here at the one that um, I didn't overlap the edge, you know, with the background, there's a white line there. So, you know, it's very subtle, but it's there. So it's good to just add that little bit of extra margin um, of overlapping art around the artboard. But once you do that, you can't see any lines here, no matter how far you zoom in, there's no soft pixels. So it looks good. All right, now let's upload it to Spoon Flower. So you can see here where I uploaded it. I'm not making you wait for that, um, but you can find, of course, that right here, click on uploaded design, and then I've uploaded that PNG that I exported. And we can see right here under design size, 150 DPI minimum. And at 150 DPI, the repeat is 11.25 inches or that artwork is 11.25 inches wide. And then from there, I can look at it on products and wallpaper, etc. So that's how you can take something that you designed as a pattern fill, um, then expand it, export it from Illustrator and upload it to Spoonflower. So I hope this has been useful. If you're interested in learning more about Adobe Illustrator, then check out my membership and my website at lauracoilcreative.com. And thank you for watching.